More than 160,000 riders from around the globe started the Zwift Academy. A four-week cycling challenge on the virtual roads of Zwift. For most, it's a personal quest to build fitness or for fun. But for others, it's a competition with the ultimate prize. Having completed the Zwift Academy in their own homes, the very best have now been selected for the grand final and brought to Spain, where just 10 riders remain in the fight to become a professional cyclist. There's no opportunity quite like this. After five gruelling days of intense competition, we will know who will be joining two of the world's best cycling teams, Alpa Koenig and Canyon SRAM. I think the rider needs to be good enough to compete at every race. This is the Zwift Academy Finals. It's going to be super challenging, best person will win. Coming up, the finalists hit the Spanish roads and put through their paces by the pro riders <laughs> before giving it their all on a hill climb time trial. Can they impress the judges? She was straight in like she'd been doing it for 10 years. The riders of the day are. This is the Zwift Academy Finals Day 2. Good morning, finalists. How are the legs feeling after yesterday? Feeling ace, I think, but uh, I guess we're going to find out. Good man. Confidence. I like it. So today, you're going to be heading out on the roads around Denia with the pro teams of Canyon Tram and Alps into Koenig to see how you cope on a fast training ride. That's right. Remember, being a pro cyclist is more than just legs and lungs, OK? So the judges are going to be looking to see your razor-sharp bike handling skills and your confidence riding shoulder to shoulder at speed with some of the best riders on the planet. Then after a few hours, we'll meet you somewhere out there where the second part of the challenge will be revealed. Oh, yes. Good luck. Go get ready. We'll see you at the team cast. Yesterday we had the uh, indoor session, so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to, to ride in this beautiful place. So they told us a little bit about the first half of the ride. There's going to be three by 10 minutes of skills. So some pace lining, a uh, 10 minute individual TT. My name is Elena Wu Yen. I am 26 years old and I'm from New York City. Um, growing up, I never identified as an athlete. In fact, I would say I was probably one of the nerdiest kids at school, just super focused on academics, music, did some ballet. After graduation, um, I moved to the Bay Area, um, and everyone there loves to bike. Um, I had never ridden a road bike before, had grown up, you know, just casually riding bikes. So this was in late 2019, kind of thought about getting a road bike and saw a used road bike, and I was like, whoa, like, this is cool. It was perfect timing, because then the pandemic hit, Bike sales went through the roof. If I had not bought that bike, I probably wouldn't even be here today. Probably pretty quickly fell in love with biking. Um, loved the feeling of, you know, pushing myself on a climb, getting to the top, being rewarded with great views. In 2022, that's when I got a lot more serious. Um, started racing both outside and also indoors on Zwift. Um, so yeah, it's been an awesome first season and it's really cool to now be here at the finals. So I live in a typical New York-sized apartment, which is very, very small. My entire Zwift setup is probably like a foot away from my table slash desk and bed. The moment that I found out um, I made it to Zwift Academy, I was actually kind of confused because um, I think it was sort of set up as like a, an interview, like you've made the finals. And I was like, whoa, like this is unreal. Um, in terms of my strengths, I'm definitely a pure climber type. Um, I think just because I'm on the smaller side, winning this would be an absolute dream come true. I think first I would just be in shock, like am I actually dreaming or is this real life? Being able to race with the World Tour Pro um, level next year would be amazing. I think it's just, yeah, wouldn't be able to even describe it in words. Kind of the same. Um, 
most of them done pace line work before, were they all quite confident? They, when you told them what they were doing, or were they...? Yeah, no, no one seemed to have any kind of, like, big, you know, questions, how do, you be, how do we do it? Everyone sort of seemed like, yeah, we, we're in control of what, we know what we're yeah. about to do. So what have you got in store for them, first of all? They start the first effort, we will try to do about three efforts today. Three, yeah. three times, uh, let's say, ten minutes. Uh, have you briefed your riders to give them a bit of a hard time, or are you just letting them <laughs> ride? We never need to brief uh, our guys to give them a hard time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> One of the most exhilarating things you can do as a road cyclist is to ride in a pace line. It's a technique that allows a group of cyclists to go much faster than one rider on their own, and for less effort by working together. Why? Because wind resistance is the biggest force slowing the rider down. If you shelter behind another rider, you save energy. The idea of the pace line then is to change the rider on the front frequently, meaning that they can ride at high speeds for a short time and then recover whilst they shelter behind the other riders. It's an easy skill to master, but the faster you go, the harder it gets. And if it goes wrong, there's a high price to pay. I wouldn't want to be the rider bringing down the Canyon Tram or Alpha into Clinic Pros. Let's put it that way. Yes, go, go, we're about 200 metres off the back of you, we can see you. So, go, go, go. What are you hoping to see from the riders today? Just good technical skills in, in the line. Obviously, how close they're happy to sit to the wheel in front of them, um, coming around the last wheel, how they get back into that pace line. And from the car, are you looking at you know, how they're riding on the bike, if they, you know, look steady, if they got good position. Pedal stroke, um, core stability, upper body control, um, you name it, yeah. just about everything mm -hmm. that makes a bike rider a good bike rider. Cooper's looking comfortable, isn't he, I think, again? Yep. That was my first impression, too. Like we saw also last year, the cadence of those guys is also always lower. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we discussed yesterday that was one of the weakest points of yeah. uh, Jasper. Yeah, yeah so I saw so immediately. Yeah, and then now, now uh, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to say, on the when he did the high power output efforts yesterday, Luca, then his cadence was. Uh, but now it's, good and it's, it's rather low, same yeah. to the speed and, and the others. So, is there anybody? Oh that's standing out to be good or bad at this so far? Neil seems to be the most, the smoothest person and the most confident just switching across into the wheels. Alex seems to be a bit over geared, but otherwise okay. Um, and I think, yeah, probably Chiara and Elena seem a little bit more hesitant and a little bit more, a bit rigid. The rotations, if yeah. you see it now, if you see how close they are uh, together, you see, they are communicating a bit. You, it looks uh, quite okay. Now it's like Matthew doesn't want to stop. The pace line session finishes with a sprint for the town side, and Matthew van der Poel exerts his authority. His job is safe for another year at least. Luca, meanwhile, may not necessarily impress the judges with his chase, but he earns a fist bump from van der Poel himself. That descent was mad. I was uh, <laughs> ripping it down there. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not used to like that kind of speed coming from Suffolk. Like we don't have anything like that. I don't know what went on behind, but I think something happened. I'm not really sure. I didn't see it, but we looked behind, and it was just like a couple of bikes on the road. Yeah, so we're just pushing it a little bit on the descent. Um, just came a little bit too hot into the corner, and everyone sort of slowed down. And then I sort of didn't have enough time, and I sort of braked quite hard and I just sort of um, clipped the wheel and went over the handlebars, so yeah.
My name's Lucas Hoffman. I'm 25. I'm from Adelaide, South Australia. My coach Dan from Nero Coaching, he's involved with Cooper Sayers and Jay Vine. He said it would be a great idea to do Zwift Academy for 2022. Australians, they don't seem to get as many opportunities. Um, the fact of it's physically isolated from the rest of the world. Um, the eyes aren't, aren't always on us. Zwift Academy is a perfect opportunity for that because you can pretty much do it from the comfort of your, your own home. But I started on the track with my, my brother, who's now Commonwealth Games champion and world champion in the team sprint. I'm probably, I would say, I'm more of a sprinter, but I'm quite good at the shorter climbs, you know, four to five minutes. I'm an apprentice electrician. I'm in my fourth year now. This came up, so that's been put on hold for the next few months. So for me, it would be quite a, a different lifestyle change from working as an electrician to being a professional rider. It'll be quite different. It'll take some adjusting. I first got my trainer four years ago when I was living in Wyala. Um, so I started Zwifting there. I find it's just best for me when I'm working. It's just easy. I come home, have a shower, have something to eat, and then just jump on the trainer. So to impress the judges, I think I'm going to have to pull out something pretty special. Um, I think a lot of us guys are pretty equal. We're all quite strong. I'm at sort of the crossroads of my career where I've sort of started to train a lot more. It's just a fantastic time to put the most into this and um, hopefully get a contract out of it. I want to give them my best shot. I don't want to go home having not given it my all. Okay, guys, we got you around a round of cortados because we're going to keep it brief, okay? So the judges have been scrutinizing your every move out there, but now you're going to be on your own, okay? In a race of truth. So you've got a time trial to come. It's not just going to be about raw power. The judges are also going to be looking for pacing, position, technique, okay? So that's, that's what's going to impress them as well, all right? Better give it everything you've got and uh, see, off the, see off the coffees. We'll get going, all right? Yeah. Okay, great stuff. This is no ordinary time trial, and it's not a regular hill climb. Starting out with gentle slopes, the road kicks up and turns into a much steeper challenge, so pacing is going to be very important to take the win. The riders go off in number order, so Jesper is first. Three, two, one, go! This isn't necessarily a course that will suit him, so he'll need to pace it perfectly to get everything out of himself over the 5.1 kilometers and impress the two Christophs. Next up, Lucas. One, go! With a two minute gap between riders and a twisting turning course, it's unlikely he'll see Jesper ahead. So for this race of truth, it's all going to be in the mind and the legs. What are your predictions for the climb? Who do you think is going to be fastest up? It would be logic to expect Luca to be the fastest. Uh, on the other hand, I'm really looking forward what Will will do with his 55 kilos. One, go! Go for it, mate! With the first two riders on course, Will is next. And this might just be his perfect challenge. At the next Matthew van der Poel. I wouldn't dare to say that, no. <laughs> My name's Will Loudon, I'm 19, and I'm from the fair county of Suffolk in the United Kingdom. So I really started cycling a very long time ago, really, when I was nine or 10 years old. And I had this like really small V-brake mountain bike, and that's kind of what really got me into it. And then I got my first like mini road bike and just sort of rode from there. My specialty in riding would definitely be time trialling. And naturally, as a smaller rider, I'm lighter. So combining both time trialling and hill climbing has kind of found a little niche for me, really, as a hill climb time trialist, I guess you could say. I do also ride for my local club. That's probably like one of the biggest skill upgrades for me, was riding in groups. So I started Zwifting 
when I've got my first smart turbo trainer, really. So having like interaction and just being able to ride with a, a, a changing world on any like interactive platform is just so much better than a, a static turbo. Outside of cycling, I have been studying medicine, but I've kind of decided to take a little break from that and pursue some other interests. In some ways, a lack of life experience was sort of not going to be so good to me becoming the best doctor I could be. I'd definitely like to do my best this week. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to just showcase what you can do. Three, two, one, go! Back on the mountain, Cooper sets off. And last but not least, Luca. Go! All the male riders are out on course, and ex choir boy medical student Will is eating away at his two rivals up the road, Jesper and Lucas. Jesper gives it his all, crossing the line in 10.44. Jesper, how was that? It looks like you left everything on the road. Maybe almost everything, yeah. Followed by Lucas at 11.16. Will crosses the line to take the lead, and with Cooper unable to quite match him. That only leaves Luca in with a chance of the win. So with a time of 10 minutes, Luca has put over 30 seconds into Will on a comparatively short course and taken victory. I mean, you look quite fresh after that. Yeah, totally fresh. Yeah? Yes. Quite good? Yeah, I'm tired, but <laughs> it's okay. It's now the women's turn to lay it down against the clock. Three, two, one. Go for it! Go, 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 go. Elena is away first. She loves climbing, but this may not be steep enough for her. One, go! Look. Alex is next. And then yesterday's rider of the day, One, Kiara, who showed that 37 certainly isn't too old to be competing at the highest level. I'm Chiara. I'm 37 years old, and I'm coming from uh, Italy. I started cycling uh, more or less uh, six years ago. I was a runner before, then I had some injuries and uh, I decided to buy a bike. It was a love at first sight with the bike. I ride every day, I cannot um, have a day without it. I know that uh, age is uh, less relevant for women in cycling. Uh, you know, Annemiek van Vleuten, she is, uh, I guess, 41, and she won everything this year. I am for sure a climber. Uh, I love uh, medium-long uh, climbs. Every time I go out in the week, uh, I'm, I am always looking for climbs. I started uh, racing on Zwift uh, in 2021 in Team Castelli. After one, two, three races, I started enjoying a lot and winning some, uh, some races, and I was happy of that. Sometimes I don't, I don't uh, believe in myself. I always feel not enough uh, compared to, to other uh, girls. And when I understood that I was able to compete at high levels, I was very, very happy and very proud of myself. Every race uh, is, um, is a kind of um, a personal challenge. Winning this competition, uh, uh, it's for sure a dream coming true. In life, you don't have to stop dreaming and you don't have to stop moving and changing. Uh, every, every chance is a great opportunity to learn uh, something new. So I don't want to stop. Three, two, Last off the line is Neela, who this course might suit if she can get her pacing right. With all four riders now out on course, they've each moved from the flatter first half of the race to the steeper second half, and gaps are starting to emerge. 
Tactics and pacing strategy as well as power will be the magic combination. But who will find the right balance to win? What are your expectations for this little clan? I'm just looking to see a good, solid performance. I think they've all got different abilities on different types of climbs. This one is more of a power climb than, you know, a, a really steep one. <laughs> Elena crosses the line in 13.37, but Alex, who started two minutes behind, crosses the line only one minute later. With a time of 11.47, Kiara has put nearly 30 seconds into her nearest rival, Neela, who finishes with 12 minutes 50. But today it was about more than just this result. So it will be interesting to hear what the judges have to say. How was it? Yeah. Yeah, hard, but I'm happy with my pacing. Yeah. How was it for you? They will... That's fun. I just know that the other girls are really, they, they're really good. Are you happy, happy with how you did on the whole today? Yeah, I think. OK, there's a lot to debrief today, isn't there, I think, folks? Firstly, I've got some results. Now, we'll start with the women show first. Kiara took the win. She was 30 seconds ahead of Neela. Then it was Alex, about another 30 seconds back. And then it was Elena bringing up the rear in fourth place. Now, Beth, I know you said Kiara was going to win. <laughs> well, why like why had you picked her? Lucky guess, lucky punch. No, I, I chose uh, Kiara because I think probably because of the performance she did on challenge one in the inside test. She was really able to pace it and expected on that sort of climb that she sh would be able to do that same again. So she proved that she could. And then guys, the winner was Luca, who had a, a, another big margin of victory. So 36 seconds up on Will. And then it was really closely packed, wasn't it? So you had Will and then you had Cooper, which seems like a good ride from him. And then you had Jesper just behind. And then Lucas sporting his new road rash was down in fifth place, but still a solid ride at, um, I think he only lost about a minute and 16. So was there anything in those results that surprised you? No, not really. Um, it was good to see that Lucas in the end after his crash was uh, rather well performing, but in the end uh, we expected Luca to be the winner. And then the other three, they were quite uh, short together. So Well, uh, good to see that he can deliver, like Chiara, on actually out on the road. And Magnus, what about for you, like particularly with the, the more technical elements maybe at the start with the pace lines? Yeah, I, th I think actually for me it's all about looking at the technical elements. We know that they're here already based on the performance that they can do, the power that they can produce. So I'm looking a lot at the how they are in the pace line, uh, the confidence that they, they ride with, um, that sort of 360 degree awareness that they have on, on the bike when they're, when they're in that group. You know, we've done a fair bit of climbing and descending today as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm watching closely all the time what they're doing there to uh, to make, I think, more of a decision for me based on that. OK, did you like what you see? So far, actually, really, really quite surprisingly good. Cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And what about you, Christoph? Was there anyone who perhaps looked weaker than any of the others? Uh, not in particular. They all confirmed that they are still uh, still quite close, not only on the pure physical performance of the day, but also on the on the bike handling. I think we were quite satisfied with uh, how they just uh, handled the bike uh, in the efforts which we did with the team. So, yeah. Very interesting. All right. And Beth Magnus, anything from you? I was probably more surprised by Neela today and, and her ability in, in the pace line. She, she really was the first either, you know, person that I caught in that group that looked confident, like super confident. Whereas the other riders took a little bit more time before they kind of settled in and found the confidence amongst the pro riders and sort of, yeah, just relaxed in that group, whereas she was straight in like she'd been doing it for 10 years. Uh, we had two guys, uh, Cooper and uh, Jasper, who did 20 to 50 watts more today on their, let's say, 10 minute uphill effort compared to the 10 minute effort yesterday. They managed pretty well in an uphill, uh, uphill effort today. 
But on the other hand, we have to say the uphill effort today was 4.7, 4.8 great percentage, which yeah. is quite rolling still. And guys, obviously we had we had a crash that we didn't see. Is it a is it a bit of a black mark for poor old Lucas? Because we talked a lot previously about the importance of bike handling and he was in the middle of the bunch by the sound of things. Yes, but it can happen always to anybody. I don't think uh, it's a good moment already to, to give him a... <laughs> a black mark. OK, <laughs> well, that's, that's really good to see. Well, it sounds to me that things are still quite close in terms of riders of the day. So I won't ask you now, but if you continue having your discussions and then we'll catch up a little bit later and we can talk to the finalists and, uh, and deliver the verdicts for today. Sound like a plan? Yes. Sounds good. Okay, great good stuff. Time. Finalists, you have made it through day two of the Zwift Academy 2022. Most of you unscathed. Unfortunately, there are still bits of Lucas on a road up in the mountains, but I've got to say, we're all super impressed with how you picked yourself up and got straight back in there. So yeah, that was very cool. Definitely. Girls, you were able to descend with one of the world's best descenders, Elise Shabby. And guys, I know Matthew and the Alps and Kona guys didn't go easy on you either. No, right. Should we have some results, first of all, for the time trial? Okay, we'll start with the men. In fifth place, we had Lucas. Fourth place, we had Jesper. Third, Cooper. And second, Will. So taking the win was Luca. So congratulations to you, Luca. And then in the women, Elena in fourth. In third place, Alex. In second place, Nila. So Chiara, you take the win, which means we've got our Italians on the top spot, both of you. So congratulations. But who impressed the judges the most? The riders of the day are. Neela and Lucas. Congratulations both. Well done. Neela, they said that you performed really well on the bike in the skills. You're really comfortable and confident on the bike and again performed really well in the hill climb. And Lucas, crashing can happen to anybody and it is part of bike riding and they were really impressed with how you picked yourself up and carried on with the day. Yeah, okay, right then finalists. You're all going to be through to tomorrow, of course, so go grab some dinner. Tomorrow is another big day, OK? So you're going to have a ride in the hills in the morning and then another session later in the day as well. Get stuck in. It was a very demanding day. Uh, it was quite tough with the climb in the end, but I actually enjoyed it, so it feels really like a relief. The result today was a confident boost. I'm just happy to be here. I'm very proud, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I, I pushed through the pain. Um, getting right out of the day is pretty, pretty special. Um, yeah, overcoming a little bit of adversity. The TT was quite rough. I couldn't quite get into the aero position, so I felt like I lost a little bit of, of time there. And going over the bumps with the shoulder was quite painful. But yeah, I guess I got through it. So looking forward to another day. What a tough day that was, Si. A long bike ride, a whole lot of pressure, and a race at the end. Oh, I know. It does feel, doesn't it, like we've started to see a couple of favourites emerge with Luca and Chiara, but we've got to qualify that. We've only seen a fraction of what the finalists can offer, so we know for certain that tomorrow, on day three, they've all got to come out swinging, all guns blazing. So make sure you check back in for episode three of Zwift Academy 2022. Now I, Manon, I'm gonna excuse myself. I've just seen Elise Shabby at the bar. I need to get some descending tips. You do, to be fair. I do, yeah. See you in a bit. Next time on Zwift Academy Finals. It's the first double day for our finalists. Outdoors, then in. I think she's struggling with the control of the bike. They go head to head on the streets of Crit City. Buckle up, it's going to go right down to the line. And two of our wannabe pros will be going home early. The riders that will be leaving the competition are.